I believed all along that we could go wherever we wanted to go as long as everyone believed in him. I mean, he told me the first day I ever met him, Purple's going to Pasadena. I believed in them as much as I knew they believed in themselves. For this season to turn out the way it did, you know, it's, it's like a dream come true. We were relentless in the way that we prepared. And I think that's what we were in 95. We were forced to continue. He's at the 10. He's in for the touchdown. As it is called the Cinderella story. Well, we've had all the romance. Now let's find out if she can dance. In the 1995 season, Northwestern went 2-1 against non-conference opponents with a surprising upset at Notre Dame and a surprising loss to Miami of Ohio. But as September drew to a close, the Wildcats were preparing to open up Big Ten play. First up, a home game against Indiana, and Bill Mallory's Hoosiers had won nine of the last ten meetings from the Wildcats. Entering the Big Ten, right, coming off a win with Notre Dame, a loss, a win with Air Force, I think we're still on the back burner of the nation's eyes. I just remember that Indiana was a team that we would be lumped in as, um, you know, equal to in terms of, um, you know, talent on the field, um, record, scores, so we're pretty much equal. And we'd struggled with Indiana uh, a lot when we first got there, the first three years when we played them, because they were a very talented football team. They had a reputation for just being playing hard-nosed football, right? And we had uh, lost to Indiana my first two years, and we had beat them uh, the previous year. But again, it's Big Ten football. And, you know, that's, again, going back to that lesson that we learned with my Ohio, regardless of whether it was Indiana or Michigan, our approach had to be the same. I think we walked off the field against Air Force going, we're the team that beat Notre Dame, right? And and that, that was the mindset going into the Indiana week. Indiana had a very good running back by the name of Alex Smith. And he was the guy, I think he'd had a big game against them the year before. Uh, he was a great opportunity as a defense to shut down, you know, one of the top running backs in the Big Ten. You know, the Big Ten was, was pretty loaded. And, uh, and Indiana at the time was, you know, kind of had a little bit of that Northwestern thing, right? Where there were expectations, like maybe this is the year, maybe this is the year. Um, but there was there was a lot of buzz around campus. Um, I think students had been, um, you know, anxious for something like this to happen for a long time. And so I think there was some buzz about, let's see how real this is. It was gonna take a lot to overcome the Miami loss, but really, that didn't matter. We were entering the Big Ten Conference where we have not fared well in a long, long time. I remember being backed up in the end zone. Um, I remember having a nice win, Chicago win behind me. It wasn't even my greatest kick, and it just took a beautiful Northwestern role. First of all, Paul worked his butt off. I'm not sure I've seen a guy work harder, particularly, particularly a skill position guy. All of his hard work channeled into that particular play. I think it rolled out on the one or the two or the three yard line, whatever it was. Um, so at the time, I didn't realize how, how long it was or I tied the school record. I, I mean, I wish I broke the school record, but uh, but what can you do? It was, it was, a, it was it was a beautiful thing. It was nice. It was too nice to be recognized uh, before having tied the, the, the longest punt in Northwestern's history. It's just a beautiful, beautiful honor. Alex Smith, the ball carrier. You know, Bill Mallory coached football team. Alex Smith at running back, tough, physical. Uh, Going to be a huge challenge from the standpoint of you know, we weren't going to intimidate Indiana. You know, Indiana was going to come in uh, to Dyke Stadium at that point now, Ryan Field, and say, we're going to pound the ball. We're going to run it right down your throat. Randy Walker, now again, knowing what I know, a disciple, played for Bill Mallory. So a lot of similarities offensively and defensively. You know, so when you popped on the tape, you know, during that, that film week, it was like, man, this is just like Miami all over again. We're not going to let that happen. We're not going to let this happen.
To put the Wildcats on the board. Here's the kick. It is up and it is good. You know, I think it was uh, a different era, remember, in Big Ten football at the time. It's not what we have today. And, and look, they would line up in the eye and, you know, Hartle is the fullback uh, opening holes, helping to open holes. We had a, a terrific offensive line for Darnell Autry. And, and I think that he was a guy who just had the respect of everybody on that team. He was uh, one of those workmanlike type players who just went out there and, and got the job done. And, you know, I, I think that, um, I, I, you know, it's, it's hard to single out any individual players on that team, but I think he was a guy who was universally respected. And he was a young guy, too. So, I mean, he was an underclassman and yet I think he certainly showed his medal in uh, game after game. Steve Schnur hands it off to Arnell Autry up the middle cuts to the right across the 40 still on his feet he's to the 30 angling left to 25 to 20 he's to the 15 he's to the 5 he's in for the touchdown Darnell Autry 42 yards and the Wildcats go back on top is he amazing or what? Darnell I think had one of his best games we really didn't honestly have to pass the ball. Through the previous three weeks, we really had developed a recipe for winning at this point in time. Run the football, play great defense. You know, that was our recipe. And through the first three weeks of the season, we were two and one going into that Indiana game and uh, we knew the recipe to win. And we ran the football well and we played great defense. The foundation Expect Victory is supported by Northwestern Medicine relentless in the quest for better care. And by Under Armour, official outfitter of Northwestern football. You know, they really controlled the game, but like in a lot of their games, it was a close game at halftime. It might, might have been tied at halftime, and then they took over in the second half. Part of that game was um, really about buying into the team. Yes, I would love to get six catches 100 yards again, but you know, uh, we were doing something so great on offense. It was like, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. If they can't stop it, then let's keep running it. And literally, we kept running the ball. Field goal, it's good. Let's go Northwestern, 13, Indiana, seven. And I just remember we uh, closed it down. Uh, they ran, a, I believe, a power eye. And this guy was running all over the Big Ten. And uh, it was an opportunity for us to showcase how we can shut down uh, their run game and, you know, force them to open it up for their pass game. And Sutkowski's punt is a boomer. Ooh. A high wobbly punt drives Musso all the way back to the seven yard line, makes the catch, makes a tackle, 15 20. He's to the 25, the 30, in the open field. He's to the 50, the 40, the 30. Graham Musso along the sidelines, one man to beat. And he's taken out of bounds at the six-yard line. Brian Musso burns IU for the second year in a row. All right, big time. 89-yard punt. Well, the Indiana game, I get you know, sticks out because I returned a punt for a long ways and got tackled by the punter, and I received endless abuse for that for my entire life. Single setback, Autry. He gets the handoff left side. He's inside the five into the end zone. He was down the, uh, the sideline towards the press box for a long game. And I was on the sideline, and Larry Lilger, our strength coach, you know, most strength coaches are pretty buffed up. He goes ahead and raises his arms up to, to cheer, and his left fist catches me right in the jaw and knocks out my two front teeth. And uh, so I'll vividly remember that long run from Brian Musso. We had big plays in that game. And uh, uh, that was the first Big Ten game, and we made a big deal about that. Here's the snap to Ditto, under pressure, and down he goes! Pat Fitzgerald, second sack of the year. And Chris Ditto takes the snap, the play fake, Ditto, hit, and fumbled the football, picked up by the Wildcats, Casey Daly. He's at the 25, the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! 
42-yard fumble return for Casey Daly. I remember picking up a fumble and scoring, and I just remember being happy I didn't get caught by somebody. You know, um, just glad I made it into the end zone. And, you know, you practice all those scoop and scores. You practice that all the time. But it was it was nice to have it come true and, you know, bend your knees and pick it up and go. So, yeah, I think that's the only touchdown I've ever scored at any level. Maybe, yeah, maybe high school. But, like, so that was, that was nice. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. I remember that part. That was fun. Yeah, Casey Daly was a great, great player, great athlete. To have him end up becoming the all-time leading sack uh, producer in, in Northwestern history for our time was something that was absolutely spectacular. Snap in the shotgun, Greenlee makes the catch, gets rid of it, it's intercepted by the Wildcats. Off of Holmes, it's fumbled and then picked up by Chris Martin. Our defense in 95 was unbelievable. And they went out and stuffed Indiana and we were able to run the football and punch it in a few times and uh, away we went. Here's the snap to the quarterback. Greenlee fires left side, undershoots the intended receiver, left side of the end zone. The ball goes over to the Wildcats at the end of the football game. For the second year in a row, the Northwestern Wildcats defeat the Indiana Hoosiers. We've done what maybe people that were Northwestern fans expected us to, to do against an Indiana. Um, but there was there was obviously a big test uh, coming up the following week. It feels great to be three and one, so you know we're taking all this pride. Michigan next week, so bring it on. Game five sent Northwestern back out on the road, and not just to any stadium, but to the big house in Ann Arbor. Michigan owned a long winning streak against the Wildcats, but Gary Barnett thought his team had one distinct advantage. No one on the roster had ever played at Michigan. They didn't know they were supposed to be intimidated. Number 25, Northwestern, invade the Michigan Wolverines home turf. And Michigan comes in with a perfect mark of 5-0. and Thought process was, okay, win one game at a time and see where that takes you. All right, and it just so happened that Michigan was the next game. I think being in the big house, is an experience so you know if you grow up liking football that's that's one of the ones that you that you remember the first time you walk on that field michigan, welcome back to ann arbor everybody brad nestler and gary daniels here here's a michigan team unbeaten at five and zero on their second quarter going in that game we felt one this is a let's prove ourselves again it's almost the same mentality we took going in a noted aim we knew we had to take not only that same mentality but take it to another level this was the real deal. Um, if you got any chance in the Big Ten, you're going to have to go through Michigan. The weather may be a bit of a problem, too, as we have partly cloudy skies. The rain has just started to drift in. 57 degrees. Talked to Bo Schimbeckler a moment ago. He said it's a perfect day for football. We should play two. You know, we knew what the environment was going to be. We knew it was going to be another box that we had to check. Um, and so we, we knew it was going to be a tall task. Michigan was a, was a team that I really wanted to beat. And uh, I mean, and our coaching staff really wanted to win that game. And not that we didn't every game, but, but uh, we knew the importance of that game. And we knew how hard it was going to be going into the big house and playing and not having beaten them in 19 years or something like that. This was going to be a huge test for us. And this was, to me, a defining moment, right? So we beat Notre Dame, lose the Miami to Ohio, a little bit of a di dichotomy there. Then we beat Handley Air Force in Indiana, so we've got some momentum going in. And this is the opportunity to prove, is this real or not? Do we have something here? or not. We all see uh, what Michigan has done over the years and uh, to walk out of that tunnel, you know, for the opening, um, you know, coin toss and opening kickoff, it, it, it still brings, um, you know, chills to me right now because of the overall experience on what it is to, to go against and play against the Michigan and the Wolverines and they got the blue, blue helmets with the yellow gold stripes and yeah, it was a great opportunity to go out there and compete. And of course, you know, no matter what season, what year they are, they always have stars on their team. On offense, there's always going to be someone who they did not hear about the year before, maybe not even the week before, but come out and you're like, who is that? What running? Tim Biaka, what? How do you, 
throughout this situation. On this play, number 50, Fitzgerald takes one right in the face, and then Bennett comes up. Biakabatuka runs. Now at 45 years old, I still have nightmares of Tishmunga Biakabatuka going right through us, you know, up and down the field. I mean, you know, he's the best player, maybe mainstream American football today. Doesn't remember it from the 90s. You know, great cutback guy. He would he was hard to bring down, strong lower unit. He could run through tackles, but he just had that vision. He kept cutting the ball back. And we had a tough time corralling him. One of the most talented freak show athletes, big physical, powerful, explosive, could run you over, make you miss, run around you. I just never, I never played against somebody who, when the play started, he was in the hole already. He was already at me or past me. I just, I had not seen that level of speed and the level of explosion before ever, really. He had such a, a, a narrow torso. He was really slippery and hard to tackle. And as you know from the stats, he rushed for a a number of yards and was very difficult. But in Ben but drop, don't break fashion in that particular game, they stalled because of our defense a lot in the red zone and obviously uh, led to a number of, of field goals. The throw and it's going to bring up a field goal situation for Michigan. It's a 41 yard field goal attempt. And he's got it right down State Street. Michigan on the ball. You know, I'll, I'll never forget, uh, we, we went through, we go through a scouting report, um, and I'm sure today it's all digital, and they try to be green, but ours was like 75 pages of double-sided print, and, you know, it was All-American this, and five-star this, and literally on every position, right, and Barnett was ranting and raving and started to go through it. He used to read through everybody at what position and what, you know, how, what kind of player they were, and sort of threw the book down and said, guys, they're, they're all All-American, so, I, you know. Who knows? Who knows how we'll do? We we can call them and tell them we don't want to play, or we can just show up and see how we do. And, you know, it was a message like that, and got us fired up. Um, you know, we had, we clearly were the you know the the underdog. You know, you talk about playing the programs that are kind of more the oyster as opposed to the eagle. That was, I think, Barnett's message that week, right? You know, Michigan had everything in place like the oyster. You know, a nice little shell covering it up. Historic program. Anytime there was a storm, they just closed the shell and protect that pearl, the football program. And, you know, he, he, he described us as being the eagle, the symbol of America. You know, it's got to fight, scratch, and claw to be successful. And he kind of set the tone that that was going to be that kind of game. And, you know, it was kind of a split, split uh, media attention. I mean, there was probably half the country, three quarters of the country that said we were a fluke, we were a one-hit wonder. And, you know, we had no chance to beat Michigan. And then there was maybe the quarter of the country, most of probably the Northwestern alums and in the media world that were picking us to win. And, um, you know, we just knew that that was going to be just a bat. I mean, it was it was going to be us against 110,000. If that was our focus, then the, the, the 11 guys in the field were going to get after us. So take the eagle approach, fight, scratch, claw, uh, and, and go and take what we want. And uh, the game ended up being everything we thought it was going to be. Schnur to throw for the first time. He swings it out to Hartle. He's at the 35 to 40, looking for a block. Cuts it back inside, and he's cartwheeled at the 50, near a first down to the Michigan 49-yard line. Matt Hartle, the redshirt freshman. First and foremost, I'd be lying to you if I didn't think three and two coming out of that game was so bad. <laughs> you know, we, we knew the challenge that we had in front of us. Um, Michigan, their roster that year was loaded with All-Americans up and down the roster. It is every year. You know, going and playing in front of a hundred thousand people, um, you know, it's challenging regardless of era and time. You're talking just on offense. This is right at this time we're going to be the most prolific offense our defense has seen going into the season. That Michigan team was was perhaps the most physical team that I had ever seen us play. I was a kicker. I didn't get hit. I always tell people I stopped getting hit when it got serious. But that was one of the most physical teams that I've ever seen. That's the best team we played that year. Hands down, the best team we played. They were the most talented. They were the most physical. That was a grinder of a game. And Lozowski makes a nice stop, man. He, if he had turned around, he probably could have caught that back. Brian Musso back deep for Northwestern. He's dangerous. Musso takes at the 14. And he lost the ball. I believe Northwestern covered it. 
you think about gaming, you know, leveling up, uh, Michigan was also at the top tier and they're still the top tier in the Big Ten. And here was an opportunity for us to compete to show how well we've uh, we've done and uh, how we can compete at the, the next level. Second and 10 from the 39. And Greasy will hand it off. Bianca but took a hole up the middle. He's across the 45 to the outside, the 50, the 45, the 40. Cuts it back. He's at the 35. Stiff arms him in. Still on his feet. He's to the 15 and finally brought down at the Northwestern 15 yard line by Rodney Ray. 46 yard run by Tim Bianca Batuka. the first quarter. Three now like Michigan. Set to start the second. Tight end set. Mercury Hayes the lone line. You know, you you don't want to wait till you get down to the goal line to play your best football, but it seems like we would do that for some reason just to make it interesting. Michigan had first and goal, I think, at the one. And they had Tim Biaka Batuka, who's like a diesel train in the backfield. And I remember Fitz just stoning him at the one, maybe the two yard line. That was kind of a thought process of the defense. As long as they don't score, they can't win. You know, playing, playing at their place, they got their crowd with them and everything. But it didn't phase our guys. It didn't phase them at all. And now he sends Bianca Batuka in motion, empty backfield. And Greasy to throw on third and goal for the end zone. It's broken up. Broken up in the right side of the end zone by Chris Martin, who was covering Amani Toomer. We went in there and it was a great battle. You know, I, I laugh with Amani Toomer sometimes now because uh, he liked to he liked to chirp and he liked to, you know, during the game I had a chance to guard him a decent amount. He liked to tell me how good he was. Chris Martin, he, he's my he was my roommate uh, freshman year, and I remember when uh, we were paired up together. And you know, here's this young guy out of Tampa, Florida. And here's me from Phoenix, Arizona, and we're in the middle of Chicago, and of course getting ready for you know after the fall season, the winter of Chicago. Each of us looking at it, just going, "Why are we here?" The joke with Chris is that this guy could have been a bodybuilder. This guy was swole. He was big. It was like, man, you're you're a football player. You had four year starters in uh, William Bennett at safety, and uh, Chris Martin and Rodney Ray at those corners. Um, when you can run one-on-one -on -one, uh, man coverage, that allows you to do some things uh, schematically on defense that um, a lot of teams couldn't do because they didn't have the personnel to do it. Dwayne Bates in is the third wide receiver for the Wildcats on third and 10. Wolverine show blitz, now drop back. And Schnur pumps once, now he guns it for Bates, makes a great catch at the 34-yard line. Unbelievable catch by Dwayne Bates with Woodson covering. Uh, I had an outside comeback route at the time against freshman Charles Wilson, who's obviously Heisman, NFL, Hall of Fame, best cornerback I, I personally played against at both levels. I had to jump super high, which is the first time I really tested my vertical. I threw the ball, it wasn't a big deal. I threw the ball and I got hit front side, but as I was falling, the defensive end rushing up the other side, my, my head hit his me as he was running by and snapped my neck over and it looked pretty gruesome on tape it certainly felt bad um i sort of lost all the feeling in my shoulder and my arm and the answer i'm chris hamdorf good friend of mine um one of my roommates he went in the game to the coach's credit uh they called a pass play on the first play which clearly michigan did not expect first first down since eight minutes remained in the first quarter and coming up to him on a first down down to the 41-yard line is Darren Drexler, the big tight end. How about that for entering the game and throwing for 25 yards? Chris Hamdorf, who was my other roommate, uh, came into the game and was so nervous he couldn't call a play in the huddle. I think Rob Johnson, the center, actually ended up like taking him out of the huddle and, and calming him down. He first of all, I couldn't believe he was playing. He couldn't get his chin strap on. He couldn't find his helmet. He was just he was a hot mess trying to get on that field, and he gets into the huddle and he's so nervous. He, he, he can't get the play call out. He, he can't. He's mumbling. He, he's nervous. He had to step out of the huddle and then kind of reset. It, it made us all laugh so hard. And I think it, it relaxed us at that moment. And, you know, for him to come out of, you know, literally, you know, shaking in his boots to, to be out there in an unexpected fashion and to turn around and throw a 25-yard pass to Darren Drexler, 
I mean, that, and, and that microcosm of, of a play was our entire season. We just went out and made plays that in previous years we hadn't made before. Going to go to the air for the third time. He's going downfield. Waterman makes the catch at the 10 yard line. 26 yard gain. Chris Handorf has come off the bench. Three for three passing. And that was huge. Uh, we, we needed it. The momentum was clearly on Michigan's side at that point. And uh, Hamdorf came in and did a tremendous job. Sam Valentini, the 29-yard attempt. He hasn't missed yet this year. Seven straight field goals. Eight straight field goals. I had told Coach Barnett, you know, a couple of days prior to that game that I was going to win this game. I didn't know how. I didn't know, you know, under what circumstances, but I was going to win this game. And he should feel comfortable riding me during this ball game. Some of it had to do with, you know, their kicker, a guy named Remy Hamilton, was an All-American the prior year. And, you know, there, there's a measuring stick, you know, for me personally. But also I'd grown up, you know, following college football, following, you know, Notre Dame and Michigan and Ohio State growing up in, in Cleveland. And I'd never been to the big house. And, you know, it's the field's the same size the stadium is much different than than any place else i'd ever been but i also knew if we were going to go anywhere we had to win this game and the only way we were going to win was to maximize every opportunity that we had seven short of the first down pat fitzgerald leading the defensive convoy greasy looking to head coach lloyd carr on the sidelines i think they are going to go for it tip Fourth and three at the 29. They are three of five on fourth down this year. Greasy back to throw on fourth down. Guns in. It's nearly intercepted by Pat Fitzgerald. Incomplete. Fitzgerald stepped in front of Mercury Hayes at about the 27-yard line. What a great defensive stand again by the Wildcats. To Paul Burton. Here's the snap. And not much pressure. Burton gets away. A wobbly punt. Toomer signals fair catch. Drops the ball. Wildcats recover the football at the 29-yard line. I think no official indication. It is Northwestern ball. Yes, it is. It was recovered by the Wildcats. Toomer dropped the ball. We talked about mistakes, Ted, being so crucial in a game like this. Wildcats now with a chance to grab the lead before halftime. To tie the game. Here's the snap, here's the kick by Valenzizzi. Line drive kick is up, it is good! It wasn't pretty, but it got there with one second to go. It's beautiful as far as Northwestern's concerned. Valenzizzi ties an NU record with his ninth consecutive field goal, but more to the point, Northwestern ties Michigan. We're tied at six. The Foundation Expect Victory is brought to you by Wintrust. Chicago's bank and official bank of Chicago's Big Ten team. And by Constellation Energy, proud partner of Northwestern Athletics. Halftime in Ann Arbor, and we are all tied up. Number seven, Michigan. Number 25, Northwestern. Knotted at six apiece. Battle of field goals, Gear and uh, tough defenses by both teams, but maybe a story of all the offensive weapons we talked about misfiring a little bit. Well, especially the Northwestern running game. I really felt for them to stay in this game, they were going to have to run the ball, and Autry just has not been able to get off that Michigan defense, and they really haven't been committing a lot of guys. You know, at, at halftime, you know, Coach Barnett said we're in, the, we're in a great spot. It's 0-0, we gotta go out and win the half. And in the second half, our defense continued to get better and better throughout the game. Again, I can't emphasize enough, if we played them 99 times, they, or 100 times, they probably win 99 times. Bangs it outside and a nice open field hit by Charles Woodson. Boy, they like this freshman and I can see why. Excellent 
extra points coming up. First touchdown of the game, and Hamilton's extra point is good Boy, for the Wolverines. Shorter kick and high. He's just going to have to hustle, and he dropped it. Michigan may cover it. They've got it. Beasley ran for all he was worth and just couldn't get to that ball. I think sometimes with us, you know, you would hear, and sometimes it's a little bit of a misnomer, but you would hear, sort of a bend but don't break defense, you know, sort of thing. Because we did run two high safeties, cover two a decent amount. And the thought being, you know, is that we weren't going to give up the deep ball. Ultimately, the difference in that game, they missed a field goal. I made four. Now, it was, it was a six-point difference, but they missed a field goal at a critical juncture. We were able to, to get to a point where we could build a lead and force them to do things that they weren't comfortable with. With a, with a quarterback, Brian Greasy, who ultimately led them to a national championship, but was still inexperienced. And, you know, yeah, Tim Biakabatuka rushed for a million yards, but he didn't really hurt us. And, you know, somehow I just felt that that was going to come down to me. And I knew I was ready for it. I knew I would be able to rise to the occasion. On some level, I'd perhaps waited for that my whole life. He's connected earlier from 29 and 28. This will be a 32-yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark with Paul Burton to hold. Here's the snap. Here's the kick by Valenzizzi. It is up, and it is good. Ten in a row for Valenzizzi, a new Northwestern record in the Wildcats are within four with 3.48 to go in the third. And as, as time went on, you know, we were hanging with them, hanging with them, making some plays. Our defense was stout. Uh, and we began to, again, instill that comes. Hey, we can play with these guys. We can beat these guys. And the deeper it went into the game, the more that confidence grew. Here comes the corner blitz again. It's picked up. Greasy has time. Incomplete intended for Tumor. How about the job Chris Martin's done today? And again, here is a guy that uh, um, started off on offense and then moved him to defense and, you know, joined the defensive backfield uh, and, uh, again, learning what it takes to be a winner, what it takes to step up to the next level. And, of course, him being a ball hawk, catching every ball that came his way, uh, interception, uh, you know, he ended up becoming an All-American because of it. And, you know, he's a star. No matter what happened during the course of the day, we, we just felt like we would somehow we would make a play. And, um, you know, at that point, you know, we, we really believed, you know, our coach would always tell us, like, who's going to be the next one up? Don't wait for your teammate to make the play. You go make it. If you have a play there, go trigger and make the play. That was a game where, again, our defense showed how much we were in the mix and how tough we were. Their defense took the ball away. They were the, the top takeaway team. They came up with interceptions. A lot of times they scored on them or they set up their offense to turn them into points. They did that in that game. Dwayne Bates in motion right to left. Schnur, one step drop, a lateral to Dwayne Bates. He's gonna throw for Darren Drexler. Makes the catch at the five yard line. First and goal, Wildcats. Coach Meyer called a double pass play. We had practiced it. We had been practicing that probably since preseason camp. Dwayne Bates had played some quarterback and uh, they, I think, had confidence in his ability to get the ball down the field. And I remember when that play was called. I mean, I was, you, you can't see it on film. But boy, was I, I, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie. You know, Burnett liked to dial that stuff up. And I think as a, t as a team, players want to be aggressive. You know, it's just, it's just the way you want to play is you want to take the shot. So, yeah, I mean, we were not shy about calling that stuff. When I caught the pass and I went to throw it. It was at that point, it was a natural reaction with the butterflies, with the nervousness, but with the excitement and with the experience of being a quarterback, it all came together uh, in just a simple pass. 
um, that again was a big play that we needed. I mean, Michigan was really shutting us down. The two Wildcats, 40% today on third down, four out of 10. Wayne Bates goes in motion right to left. Schnur takes the snap, play fake. He's gonna throw man wide open, sliding catch, touchdown, yes! Matt Hartle. Matt Hartle's first touchdown. We got down to score, you know, in, in Hartle, we'd call the sort of a fullback flat route off a of play action. And, um, I remember making the fake, coming around, he's wide open, and I go to throw it and just like totally short arm it. And I'm like, I mean, he, he couldn't have been more open. There was nobody even around him. First of all, Matt was a, a freshman on that team, a redshirt freshman. And, um, you know, he was more like uh, both personality and play style, like an offensive lineman than he was a running back. Thank goodness he slid down and caught the ball. Uh, it, it, it could have been like on Sports Center if I, if I had thrown it any worse uh, for, for one of the biggest gaps of all time. But uh, he, he bailed me out and made a nice catch. Uh, the guys just loved him. I mean, he was, you know, he was, he was as loved as anybody, as anybody on the team or anybody could be. And I remember hugging him after the touchdown and screaming at him that you're not a freshman anymore. And uh, that was uh, probably my fondest memory from, from that game. Chris and, and Rodney did an excellent job. Uh, uh, William had a, a pretty good game. Uh, Eric Collier had a pretty good game. And Hudefa had a, an exceptional game. <laughs> you know, we have, for the most part, have been bringing Hudefa on the outside. And Hudefa said, uh, <clears throat> he was telling Coach Vanderland, and he says, uh, you know, Coach, you can bring me inside. I, I can go in there, too. I'm not afraid of those guys. They lead by three. Schnur, the play fit. He's going to throw. Sets up. He's going deep for Dwayne Bates. He's open. Makes the catch at the 15. And he's pulled down at the 5. First and goal, Wildcats. 46 yards. Play action. Darnell Archie was the bait. We went right down the field. We, we had to complete a long pass to Bates on one of those drives. That was a lot of fun. Um, great, you know, great route by Dwayne. Great catch. All right, this will be a 22-yard attempt. Out of the hold of Paul Burton from the right hash mark. Here's the snap. Here's the kick by Valenzizzi. It is up. And it is good. And the Wildcats extend the lead with 8.42 to go in the game. Northwestern. Remember only one blemish. Got a, a fluke ending against Miami of Ohio. They're trying to go to 4-1 and one and pick off Michigan. Here comes the blitz again. And Williams goes down for a loss. Matt Rice from his defensive end spot. They certainly played every snap. Like, look, they're not going to back off. They're not going to be pushed around by Michigan or anybody else they play. And that was huge for them. And that's, like I say, that that's where I think we really knew how good that defense had the potential to be. This Gerald still has his hands on his head, knowing that that ball went right through his hands. We don't want to rough a punter if you're special to this play. Left footer kicks away. Brian Musso will take it to 30. And Musso broke a couple of tackles. He got about 11 on the return. Here comes the blitz. Schnur throwing for his life. A big loss coming up. He got it to his tight end. It would have been better left to drop that. You know, we had chances to, to really make our mark and put it a little bit out of reach for Michigan, but we had kept settling for field goals. and. You know, even towards the end, right? We're up and it's like, oh my goodness, this, this could end up in a one point loss. A lot of those players had played a lot of football. So they were comfortable out on the field. And so, you know, we could make those calls and, and they could make those adjustments. And uh, that, that that meant a lot to our defense. Here comes a blitz on Greasy, who loads and goes long. Tumor can't quite get it in the corner. Do have to give that secondary credit. Jerry Brown is the new secondary coach at Northwestern, who came from uh, the Minnesota Vikings after being in the NFL, and his troops have done a whale of a job. The Akabatuka. Football's loose, covered by Michigan. 
three wide out for Brian Greasy. Here comes the blitz from Ismaili, and he got it as he got rid of the football. You know, Rand, uh, Vandy called a four-field pressure um, where it was myself and Hudefa Ismaili, um, and I was just smart enough to let Hudefa go first. So Hudefa got picked up by the protection, and here comes the slow, stiff alligator uh, coming unblocked. And uh, I hit him the first time, ends up being an incomplete pass. I think there was a timeout, and um, we got together on the sideline, um, and uh, who David said that I should tell the coaching staff to run the same blitz. <laughs> he said that they'd listen to me, so we ran the same pressure. Last chance for Michigan. Fourth and 15. They're going to bring it again. Greasy, hit as he throws. It is intercepted by Bennett. Greasy still down to Gerald, hit him again. The interception was awesome, even to this day, that uh, when people go, you played football? And so that highlight gets shown pretty much almost every season when Northwestern, Northwestern plays against Michigan that, that week. When Bennett capped that off, that was, that was awesome. You could just feel the adrenaline. Um, I was so happy for him, too, because we would always talk, talk about, you know, sort of building a legacy and leaving our mark on the program. Uh, Will was very much a, a visualization type guy, you know, seeing himself making big plays. Um, the ball was in the air, and I dove for it and made the catch and scooped it up. And, you know, we're number one. We're going to finish this game with a win. So looking back on it, lots of, uh, lots of memories, um, great time. And, of course, um, that was a great experience. And here's Autry now. And Autry cuts outside and finally breaks one. He wants to stay in bounds now. That game told us that, you know what, we, we really could have a chance at winning this conference. They showed that that Notre Dame win wasn't in any way a fluke. If you can go into South Bend and beat the Irish, and then you can go to Ann Arbor and beat Michigan just about a month later, then I think you have silenced anybody who's suggesting that well, Notre Dame didn't bring their best that day, and you were lucky to win. Like I said, if you can find yourself a 59 Cadillac convertible, you've got a uh, classic. And now the Northwestern fans have two classics in a single year. An upset of Notre Dame, and soon to be an upset of the Michigan Wolverines. Not only an upset of Michigan, but doing it in the big house in Ann Arbor. That was, you know, that was a defining moment, because that's when you start to think, hmm, we've got something here. We could do something special this season. Yeah, I remember I said to Gary on the postgame show, I said, Gary, you guys stop Michigan at the one yard line. Nobody stops Michigan. The, you know that. And he said, no, I don't know that. And I realized right then that uh, this was a team with a, a very different mindset. Everybody, I mean, everybody thought we had a chance and in our building. And then the, the newspapers, uh, started playing it up that same way. So then Hurlbutt had to get real busy. You know, he, he had to do a lot of stuff. That's when it just totally ramped up again. It was like after Notre Dame again, because here we were, um, we beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame and we beat Michigan at Michigan. So that's when it never ended after that. It just, um, the, the hype around the team at that point and, um, and truly people believing at that point that we were for real. Mike, thanks very much. Coach, congratulations. Two back-to-back -back victories. Outstanding upsets. What has happened at Northwestern University? Well, I wore my lucky shoes, and then that's a heck of a way to get the four and one, isn't it? But our uh, our kids, all week, they just practiced like I thought they we were going to win the game. And uh, I told you that last night, that we came in here to win it. And what an effort by our defense. And our secondary to play those receivers the way that they did. I mean, I, I'm just so proud of those players. It was amazing. Barnett was like, where was everybody when we were, you know, when we were losing? You know, are you going to listen to them now? We told you not to listen to them then. Are you going to listen to them now? And like, yeah, coach, we're going to listen to them. This is awesome, man. So, you know, we had to grow up and mature as a team. And, and I think all those things were, were necessary for us to live through. And, and then more importantly, big picture as a program for us to live through to become the, the program and the team that we were capable of. Well, I think so. Our defense played terrific. And, you know, we knew their defense was so good. But, uh, you know, we, we kept ourselves in scoring position. And with Sam Valentini, you always have a chance. So 
Yeah, you know, just a great game plan by and, and well played by all the guys. I, you know, I don't know what to say at this point. Coach, congratulations to you and your wild. You know, the the most indelible image to me of of that game happened after the game. Um, we were on the bus and we were departing, and as we drove through the parking lot, there's all the Michigan fans raising their glass to us. You know clapping and waving to us as we left and you know you knew you had done something great to have beaten Michigan I think we all knew that in the back of our minds to really go anywhere we were going to have to beat Michigan uh, something that perhaps others didn't believe but I, I know in that locker room we felt that we could beat that team